want to uh, just speak with you just for a few moments this morning. Thank you for joining us live stream. I know this is a very unusual uh, situation for all of us around the world, really, and being able to share uh, the gospel through the technology that we have. Uh, but I'm very delighted that I'm able to be here today. I think it's kind of ironic that uh, one third of my life was actually spent here in pastoring 20 years at the Empire Pentecostal Holiness Church. And today I celebrate my 60th birthday. And uh, as I look out through the, uh, uh, the sanctuary and there's pews that are empty today because of the coronavirus, uh, I just know that there's people in, uh, at homes in different places today listening and I want to say thank you for joining us today. Thank you for uh, just allowing us to come into your home and to minister to you. I don't want to take a lot of time with that, but I do want to also say that there are uh, other people beyond the Empire Pentecostal holding this church that's listening today, if it's live or if you're listening later uh, as it's being recorded. Uh, but there are other churches and other church members from other churches that are doing that. And so thank you again for joining us. May God bless you, particularly those Life Point Ministry churches uh, that have chosen to listen to this today. I want to just take you very briefly today to the word of the Lord, and uh, I want to take you to the book of Exodus, the 14th chapter. And uh, so as you get your Bible, your iPhone, your computer, your iPad there in the home, and you follow along with me today, uh, I want to take you to what I believe the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart for you. Uh, today, in fact, you that have heard me preach and been in services with me before know that I like props. So I brought my prop today. I brought my staff, and uh, so I want to just share some things about the staff as well. Uh, but I want to share a thought with you today. It's really this thought. We have never been here before. I know that all of us are in a place today that we've never been before, not geographically, uh, but we have uh, come to a place in our lives today of live streaming probably the gospel is being preached more today uh, and uh, in the homes of the people than it's ever been before because of the live streaming uh, we're definitely charting new territory new land and uh, just a lot of different things we here in the u.s for you that may be listening outside the u.s uh, i was talking to a gentleman on the phone yesterday from another country and he was sharing the, the ordeal that they're in and i was sharing with him some things we're facing but every one of us are facing things today that we have never faced before. But I find comfort in the word of the Lord, and I find hope, and I believe that we can find hope there today as well. So let me just take you uh, to Exodus 14 today, and uh, I want to just speak to you today for the 5th uh, through the 14th verse. So if you'll allow me to read uh, that to you today, follow along with me your word. Uh, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, uh, New Living Translation, but you follow along with me uh, with the translation you have there in your home. It says, When word reached the king of Egypt that the Israelites had fled, Pharaoh and his office officials changed their mind. What have we done? Letting all those Israelite slaves get away. They asked. So Pharaoh harnessed his chariot and called up his troops. He took with him 600 of Egypt's best chariots, along with the rest of the chariots of Egypt, each with its commander. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. So he chased after the people of Israel who had left with fists raised in defiance. The chariots, his charities, and his troops, uh, the Egyptians caught up with the people of Israel as they was camped beside the shore near Perephi, across the, from Pelophon. As Pharaoh's approached, the people of Israel looked up in panic. And there's a key word for us today, panic. When they saw the Egyptians overtaking them, they cried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, why did, we bring us out, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this world, or this would happen when we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be uh, let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It is better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. And then notice the 13th and 14th verse. It says, But Moses told the people, Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. And then listen to this. And I felt it as I was praying 
and seeking the Lord this week that God would speak in our hearts uh, here at Empire Pentecostal Holiness Church and in Life Point Ministries and other people that are listening and watching today. But this is what the Lord tells us in the Word. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. And I just want to pray for you for a moment. Then we're just going to break the bread of life and just share the word with you today. Father God, we thank you for this day. Father, I'm amazed at how this world has changed in this last week. I'm amazed how that uh, our, our life situation has changed. And so, Father, I pray today that you will help us and allow us to share the things that will be a blessing to others. Father, just help every family that's represented in their home today if they gather with husband and wives and children and grandchildren. Father, certainly we are truly having house church today around this nation and in this world. Father, may the Holy Spirit minister to every person today. May they feel the presence of the Spirit of the living God. We pray in Jesus' name and everybody as I would say, say amen, so you can say amen in your home today. I feel this in my spirit. There are three things today that I want to share with you. And so the first thought today is I think that in this story that we have today is that the Lord is telling us to keep moving. What does he mean by that? Here the Bible tells us about the children of Israel. Uh, they, was, they had just been delivered from bondage. They had just been delivered from Egypt. The reality is, I think that what the enemy means for bad, I believe God is able to take and use for his glory and for his purpose. And so I believe that in this troubled world that we live today, even though we are confined to our homes and, and we're confined to other places at the moment, uh, we can keep moving spiritually with God. That means that our heart, our life can continue to grow with the Lord, that we can see the revival renewed in our spirit. And so what I believe the Lord wants to do for the church, the body of Christ today, is to bring about a revival, and Lord, let the revival begin within me. May the revival begin within you today as you begin to uh, take this new way of coming together in your home, having Bible study, or listening to a sermon, many of you are listening to your churches and then listening to this or other services. And uh, so I just encourage you to uh, keep moving spiritually closer to God. Let God do a work in your life. I understand today that uh, the pre-K, all the way from pre-K to 12 uh, classes now are staying home. They're, li they're live streaming online doing their classes. I understand that colleges are gearing up to online their classes. I understand today that mass production of different things are being made that is needed for our medical society today. I understand today, as I stated earlier, that a record-breaking number today in America churches that are doing their services online. So I just submit to you today that the church has not set still. We may not be able to come together as we have in the past corporately in a building but the building is not the church. The reality is that the church is the people of God. And so I just encourage you today to, to be the church that God has called you to be. Keep moving for the glory of God. The second thing you need to understand today is not only we need to keep moving for the glory of God, but the second thing today is we need to understand don't panic. The word of the Lord tells us in this scripture that the, the children of Israel, that many of them, uh, that there's, there's many of them panic. There are many of them that uh, began to ask all kinds of questions. In fact, when you look at the Bible, you can find in this word that there are over 3,300 questions asked in the Bible. And in that, uh, about five of those questions was asked among the children of Israel. They began to ask questions to the Lord. They began to cry out to the Lord, and they began to say, Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Were there not enough graves in Egypt? Uh, they began to ask questions like, Did you, we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? And, 
and what have you done to us? And why did you make us leave Egypt? All of these questions. And, and so I'm just convinced today that there are many questions that people are asking today. But don't panic. Keep moving. Keep moving forward. And then don't panic. You see, I, I shared with you the, the scripture today. And I, I shared with you about Moses and how the Lord used him to to lead the people out of Egypt and how that they was in the wilderness. And, and, and we know that oftentimes as we uh, talk about leading people, we also use the metaphor, uh, the, 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 the um, uh, shepherd staff that is symbolic of, of uh, not only just the Holy Spirit, uh, the uh, shepherd staff that is symbolic of bringing people together. I begin to think about that and, I begin to think about the shepherd's staff. I, be, I begin to think about how that David, even in, in, in the times that he was uh, watching his father's sheep, I, I think about how that no doubt there was times that he used his shepherd to bring his sheep back together. Can I just tell you today that God it wants to bring us together. So keep moving for the Lord. And don't panic in this situation, but keep looking to the Lord. Know that even though we like the children of Israel, we have a multitude of questions, but yet God has the answer. I just want to submit to you today, church, uh, the Empire Church and other people that may be watching this live stream today, that God has this. My God reigns. We can keep growing in the Lord. I believe that the enemy, Satan, is getting a black eye today. Because I believe that more people are hearing the gospel today than ever before. Keep moving and don't panic. God is in control. God has all of this. You see the Bible tells us in, in uh, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, If my people who are called by not my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and restore their land. And so I just submit to you today, don't panic, keep looking to the Lord. And then the last thing I wanted to mention to you in this very brief message today is not only keep moving and don't panic, but then we find that the word of the Lord tells us that this battle is not ours. This battle belongs to God. I sincerely believe today that while dreams are being broken today, while homes are struggling, while people are out of work and no doubt our economy is in, in a troublesome time, uh, while there's sickness and there's hardship, while there's, uh, our nation is at an intense and disrupted and confused, in the midst of all of this, you and I can find the joy of the Lord that is our strength. I'm reminded of a song that says, I'm surrounded. In fact, it says, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I am surrounded by him. And as I read that or heard that this week, I thought of it in this fashion, because you see, the battle's not mine, it's God. But here we just find that we have in this season really been thrown into the ring with Satan, but God is right beside us. The Holy Spirit is our trainer, and I encourage you today to understand that the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. <clears throat> and I want to share with you just briefly, just quickly here. I, I heard a song this week that says, Lord, <clears throat> let your power fall. When your name is called, prove the doubters wrong. You're still mighty and strong. So fight, fight this battle for me and help my unbelief so I can tell all my friends that you have won again. That song goes on to say over and over, time after time, I couldn't see my way out, but you brought me out. Jesus all by himself. I give you all the glory. I'm getting excited about all your goodness, how you keep on making, how you make me over and over again. Thank you, Jesus. 
I just tell you this morning that Jesus is the great physician. He's never lost a patient. He's the great attorney. He's never lost a case. And he's the great champion. He's never lost a battle. He's never lost a fight. This morning, I want to take just a moment as I close to have prayer with you. And again, thank you for joining us for this time of worship. I want to pray for you, and then after I pray, I just want to mention about a communion service online that you can join me in tonight. Father, thank you for the privilege to share the word. Father, I know this is a challenging time for all of us. I know, Father, that there are many, many challenges in the lives of the homes of the people. I pray that the Holy Spirit will touch their heart, that you will help them to grow in the grace, that spiritually they'll keep moving, that they will not panic, and, Father, that we will just stay calm, and, Father, that we will understand that the battle's not mine, but it is the Lord's. And together, by faith, we will be more than conquerors in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to just encourage you. Uh, there's a communion service that our general officials of the IPHC is hosting tonight and uh, online. I just encourage you to watch that. Uh, you can uh, go to their website. You can go to the Facebook uh, and also see that as well. Also, I know that some of you attend Empire. Others of you attend other churches. And I can say this. I'm not the pastor here. I'm just filling in uh, as they're in transition here at Empire. But, so I can say this. But I encourage you, if you're watching a video or if you're watching this program today, I encourage you to support your church. If it's online, mail it in. Just be sure to support your church. There's no greater time that the church can rise up be the church, and do the work of the ministry. May God bless you. We love you, and we thank you for listening and being a part of this service today. God bless you.